Well, Dr. Hedengren, thank you for coming to meet with us today. Through our research, we have become somewhat of experts in our field, and we have found that parents, maybe similar to you, are often concerned about the health of their babies just after their birth. And because of that, we have created a controller where we will automate the blood oxygen concentration in premature infants. And now we will start our presentation. So background for this, the motivation we had is that my babies were in the newborn intensive care unit. And they constantly had to have their oxygen saturation levels monitored. And that's how much oxygen is attached to the hemoglobin. And they did this through a... a just a little thing they put around the foot. But the nurses were always watching it, what levels it were at. Ideal levels, 90 to 98%. But if they ever fell outside of that range, there'd be an alarm. And how they'd adjust it is they'd just simply adjust a knob that would change basically the concentration of oxygen coming into the baby. The problem with that is it was arbitrary and it took a lot of time for the nurses. And so we decided, hey, let's make a control that will do this automatically to change the oxygen coming in to meet that set point of oxygen concentration in their blood, save time for them, and still get accurate results for the baby. So the variable that we're controlling, it's called the SpO2, and essentially that's just the percentage of uh, oxygenated hemoglobin. Um, and literature values show um, that it is a function primarily of the body temperature, the pH of the body, as well as the partial pressures of uh, carbon dioxide and oxygen within the arteries, and that's shown, uh, that those relationships are shown by that graph. So with the controller where essentially changing the partial, partial pressure of oxygen coming in from the machine with some disturbances of the body temperature, let's say the baby gets a fever or something, how would the controller handle that? A few just simple first principles equations that um, kind of get at the heart of this, you know, it's a biological uh, pathway that the ox oxygen is going through, but essentially it boils down to the oxygen is coming in from the machine into the lungs and then from the lungs to the alveoli and then crossing this membrane here into the arteries where it will react with the hemoglobin to bind to it. And so with um, several equations, just simple first principles equations, we have a few transfer functions that we linearize those equations, put them in the Laplace transform, find some of the literature values for these constants for the gain and the time constant taking all of these transfer functions together um, into a model, we did then step testing on this model to get it into one FOBDT model um, and then adjusted the values according to the observations that Hans saw in his baby of more realistic parameters that we would see in a real life situation. So here's, uh, here's our system here. We're trying to keep the set point at 98. It's, it's best, especially for newborns, to keep it as high as possible. It really helps them. We got that feeding into our controller. And after doing the step test, we just we simplified those two transfer functions just down to one as an FOPDT um, uh, with, a with that delay that came from that. We've got some, the main disturbance is temperature. So we've got a random fluctuation um, that just happens. Plus, we um, include a fever. So just a slow ramp up to a higher higher temperature. And this, along with just a sinusoidal pH fluctuation, is fed into um, this model. We also, because from Hans' observations, this just didn't seem to fluctuate quite as much as we thought it might, which it might just be our controller's really good. But just to make it a little more difficult for that controller and to account for maybe some variables we weren't um, thinking about, I also added a, a fluctuation that added after this so it would be fed back into the controller to, um, and be required for it to uh, monitor. We were also able to perform a stability analysis on our controller where we found that our s controller is stable at all values of KC less than 10.2. So we were actually really happy with the results we got. So on the left here, this is going to be just our, our set point here at 98 and these are fluctuations varying between about plus or minus one in that uh, oxygen saturation. So we see some kind of jumps and spikes, and those jumps and spikes are just due to those the random fluctuation, uh, most, mostly, though some of it obviously is due to the, uh, the changing temperature, which is right here, and the pH fluctuations. Um, in the middle here, this is going to be the oxygen delivery. It maxes out at 60% O2 delivery, 
which according to literature seemed to be the highest that was safe to be exposed to for a, you know, a long period of time. Some ways that we could try to improve this is making the gain of the machine a function of age because as babies age, just as Hans's babies, now one of them is off oxygen while the other is still on, as they get older their ability to absorb oxygen increases so they don't need as much help. Um, in addition, trying to get some more data, I mean, we had some qualitative kind of observations from Hans, but getting some real data would be helpful. And then also being able to um, model different systems. We model this as a CPAP machine, so all the, the air is coming from that machine. But being able to model this as machines such as just these nasal tubes and stuff where only part of it's coming in from this oxygen delivery and part of it's from regular air.